I was going through the YouTube homepage of mine and a very interesting video pop up to me. The topic over here is the most efficient space program in the world. The thumbnail is very interesting because it is a launch of PSLV and there's a clear cut Indian flag over there. So obviously they are talking about Indian Space Research Organization. Now the last time I checked, I used to work over there. I worked over there close to one and a half year as an engineer slash scientist. And uh, let us see, I watched the video and basically they were trying to break down why Indians are able to launch satellites at a rate 70% cheaper than the rest of the world. And the first one minute was interesting enough. They said that the huge reason is that Indian engineers are not paid that much. And they said these are, these are their words, average aerospace engineer is paid $10,000 per annum. And in an organization like NASA, they will be paid $80,000. And that's a striking difference. And anyone would be saying, oh, that's the reason. That is why they're able to launch it so much, so much cheaper. And that is highly unfortunate for the scientists and engineers working at ISRO. Well, even uh, you cannot really argue that they are wrong, but it does not really give you a clear cut picture. Now, this is why. Now, $10,000, if you can convert it into rupees, it comes out to be 7,37,985 rupees as per current conversion ratio. And that will come close to somewhere around 61,500 every month. And that is true. That is the average income of every engineer in ISRO, but that is the average income at entry level. So that is your first salary, all right? And I've talked about this in Life of ISRO Scientist video, that the income will be ranging from 52,000 to up to 80,000, depending on TAHRA, that is uh, traveling allowance and house rent allowance and all that. So it is not really giving you a correct picture. So people who are watching that video might be thinking that ISRO scientists are poor and they are not paid enough. Well, that also cannot be said in a one bullet statement. So what is the thing? Throughout my time in ISRO, I have never ever felt that I'm not paid enough. And not, I'm not being patriotic. And I'm not being, I love rocket science. I do not care about the money. And over here, one, one of the top comment, 1.8 thousand likes over here. Very, very interesting. It's written, it's by some Indian only, I think. I feel like the scientists need to get paid more. And the first reply over there, scientists don't need much money. They do it for their happiness. Now, clearly, this is someone by, let us say, I don't know, maybe 12 years old or 14 years old. But the next comment is more interesting. Oh, they then they should be doing it for free. Why even bother taking salary? That is obviously correct. So it is not like scientists over there are ready to work for very low amount of salary. Obviously, they will be wanting a good life as well. Yes, you want to pursue your career in rocket science, but if they are not paid sufficiently or they are not able to raise their kids properly or uh, give them proper schooling and their family is not happy, they are smart, they are going to go somewhere else. And trust me, nobody is going to be patriotic at that point. Another very important thing that you just miss out if you're just saying that ISRO scientists are earning somewhere around $10,000 every year is that you are just eliminating the press. Now, press are special allowances for people in ISRO and that depends on the number of launches that year. And that is a huge amount of money. You can easily get close to 3 lakh rupees extra every year because of your press. And there are other allowances also like professional allowances. And that is something that you cannot completely neglect. That is a huge amount of money. You are going to get close to 1 lakh rupees or sometimes even more 1.4 lakh rupees. And that is like equal to two months of salary. And you are getting that all of a sudden in your bank account. And another thing that you must know that ISO scientists are living a good life because they are able to get loan very easily. So banks and all give them loan very easily. So even though their bank account is having only 5,000 rupees remaining, they don't care because number one, they are having whatever they need because they just took the loan and they'll pay it over time because there's huge amount of security with this job. They, nobody in this world can take your job if it is a government job and ISRO job is a government job. So that brings a big point. And second of all, obviously you are going to pay the loan. That is something that you know for sure. And that is something that bank knows for sure. So ISRO scientists are able to buy good 
vehicles, automobile, bikes, and they are able to construct houses. And plus, on top of that, you cannot forget the medical benefits. If something wrong happens to you medically, then the company is going to take care of you. And also, if someone is dependent on you, like your mother or your father, if they are completely dependent on you, then the country is going to take care of that. The government is going to take care of that. You are going to get medical facilities. And these are the things that you cannot neglect. It is like 50% of the financial part. So are they paid less? So that is what I was saying. In the 16 months that I have worked in Indian Space Research Organization, I never felt that I'm having any shortage of money. <laughs> okay, matter of fact, most of the time you'll be able to live a very good life. Okay, but there is a problem about which I'm going to talk about. But money is not a problem. And also, um, yes, the growth is kind of slow. So even after 30 years, you are going to see your salary changing from 60,000 per month to close to 2 lakhs per month. That is on a span of 30 years. But still, even those people who are like 52, 53 right now, their kids are able to study abroad, no problem. All right. So they are able to give them proper education. And I'm talking by experience. So money is not really an issue, but it is true that some of the ISRO employees are not very happy with the situation and that is connected to income. So what is the problem over there? The income is not an issue, but the differences is an issue because same level of engineer and over here they only talked about aerospace engineer, but basically ISRO is having three different major criteria uh, types of engineers, mechanical engineers and aerospace engineers basically come in same category. Their works are exactly the same. Then electronics engineer, electrical engineer and computer science engineers. These are the different kind of engineers that are over there working. The main problem would be the differences of their living standards. Or if I talk in a very simple form, the posting that they get. They are not able to live a very lavish life because of the place that they are posted. And that is the prime reason of a lot of employees being unhappy over there. There are four different kinds of posting. Number one, Sri Arikota, that is the launch pad, uh, the east coast of India. There is uh, Mahindagiri, Isro Propulsion Complex, which is 20 kilometers away from Kanyakumari. That is where all the engines and the stages are prepared and then shipped, not, not really shipped, but from road transport, moved to Sri Arikota for the launch. Uh, there is uh, three centers, LPSC, VSSC and IASU which is mainly in the city of Trivandrum, which is Kerala and comes in the west coast. But as you go south and south, it is a peninsula. So east and west, there's not much difference. Um, then there are other centers like Bangalore is having so many centers, a few like Lears, um, URSC, which was earlier ISAC. And the, the headquarter of ISRO is also in Bangalore. And then there's Ahmedabad, SAC is there. There's one center in Chandigarh also, but mainly Bangalore, Trivandrum and Sri Arikota will be the area, okay? The uh, ISRO propulsion complex is just like two hours away from Trivandrum. So it is close to that area only. Now, posting is an issue because Sri Arikota and Mahindagiri is not that much developed. So no matter how much money you get, you're never going to be able to spend it properly, all right? So uh, now there are theaters opening at uh, Sulurpeta, Sri Arikota area, but earlier there was no theater as well. So if you want to watch a movie, you have to travel to Chennai and uh, like three hours journey through train and you can only do that on weekends. Other than that, weather is pretty harsh. So North Indians are going to face a lot of problem. And same goes with Mahindagiri. So Mahindagiri is in similar category over there. So if, if Mahindagiri, you have to do shopping or go and watch some um, movie or something, you'll have to travel to Trivandrum. That is three hours journey. And or you have to travel to Chennai, which is 10 hours journey through road. So these are the real issues. Most people in LPSC, ISU and uh, VSSC, they are happy only because Trivandrum is a okay, okay city. It is not that bad. Bangalore, they are happy. No issues. But that is one issue. There's one more issue that I'm going to talk about that is overtime. Now, this is where I was talking about if you really want to make the employees happy, you don't pay more, not necessarily, but definitely pay more to people who are in posting like Mahindagri and Sri Harikota. That will definitely make them happier because the qualifications of all these engineers are exactly the same. They're exactly the same, qualified the same examination. I was ranked for, I was sent to Mahindagiri and uh, 
there is it it is all random especially through icrb examination ranking does not matter at all right so rank 1 can also go to shri harikota you don't get a choice so if the qualification is same and a lot of people will be saying that i was actually better than the person who got bangalore then what is this so at least pay them more even a little bit because this kind of mentality happens that employees are thinking that this is injustice for me that i have to stay over here so far away from my family the transportation is bad all right uh, the place is not that well developed and uh, there's the weather's are uh, weather is harsh and all so that will be an issue so if you pay them more they'll be happier and they'll be doing their work in a better manner in a happier manner but what actually happens is that is not the case matter of fact they are paid lesser because the ta and hra will be lesser in great c cities and they have firmly divided it grade a grade b grade c and it is so ridiculous that travel allowance how come travel allowance is lesser in grade c cities because the cost of petrol is same everywhere right the cost of housing is definitely understandable i lived in a house which was just costing me 2400 rupees per month that is pretty cheap okay but ta does not make any sense so the income average income after removing nps after removing ta da and hra uh sorry da you do not remove because da everyone is going to get so it is going to be close to 50 to 53 thousand rupees per month for a entry level engineer and uh, it is going to be close to 80 thousand rupees in bangalore 52 thousand in shri hari kota and mahindagiri so that is a huge disadvantage that is obviously going to make your employees unhappy but that is the other thing that it is not going to change very fast because ultimately it is a government body and it is going to take a lot of time uh, to change anything if they even consider that that is the first question whether they are going to consider this or not but if you want to keep your employees happy and you have to keep your employees happy that is absolutely a no brainer only then you are going to get rockets made so that is one thing the second thing is overtime and uh, that brings me to the real reason why isro is making these rocket launches so cheap so obviously the pay is less that is a real reason as well but it is not average income 10000 dollars is not average income of isro scientists because that is where it starts so average will obviously obviously be a little bit higher uh, below engineers they are all technicians and they are not even graduates at least from the degree they do not need to be so uh pay is uh, less but then again the living expenses in india is much lower if they pay 80000 dollars then it is going to be 60 lakhs right so that is huge amount and that is definitely not necessary if i would be getting 80000 every every year then i would be leaving isro with a chunk load of money that i'll be having a good time right but that is not necessary but other thing is that isro employees do overtime like crazy that 12 hours it is very very common of you working extremely overtime and for that overtime let us say i have to leave my work at 5 o'clock but now there's an overtime today they do not get paid extra for overtime and that is i think something which is wrong because now the employees do not really find the reason to work extra because even though they do not work extra they are not going to get paid extra but if you pay them extra at least when they stay and work extra they are going to be happy so that they found out a good way that okay we'll have to make them work extra but we cannot pay them extra what do we do and then comes the promotions so your boss is going to tell you to stay right if you say no your promotion is in his hand to a huge extent your interview is going to decide whether you are going to get promoted or not and that person who's your boss is going to write a letter of recommendation something will be going from his side so obviously people will be afraid of their bosses and they'll have to work and that makes an unhappy employee so you are getting overtime and you are getting job done very fast and you're not paying your employees that much now obviously that is not everything we cannot just discredit the smartest brains of this world now indians are born of adversity and this adversity has taught us many things one of the most important is getting stuff done in a really cheap rate so we just struggle and hustle to cut cost everywhere i think that is to a huge extent in our dna even people who are not scientists they just grew up seeing their father and mother cutting cost everywhere from vegetables to buying any new furniture so that is something that is embedded in us and i think we are the people that can make things work in the cheapest manner possible and the biggest example would be mars orbital mission that we saw so that is an extra edge that we have got just because 
because of the place that we are born or the way that we grew up i highly recommend you guys studying this book it's called history of isro by armadan i've recommended it to thousands of people there's another book by nambi narayan and he was a very very senior scientist of isro as well and the book name is ready to fire i'll link both of them down in the description box and there mainly you are going to understand how they basically built isro and they built it from absolutely nothing in the 1960s when people were barely surviving after the independence they at that time did something which was unthinkable and you know what they are still there they are 80 years old won padma shri awards but they are still here having enough energy to impart it to the new generation i attended the classes of those people and isro just has this culture it has this idea that is breathing in each and every engineer of doing something different each and every engineer and scientist is something that you are not going to find in any other government organization you are most likely not going to find employees like that in any other company because it is the air in isro that is still there other things are obviously over there that they are taking local parties like godrej and all to get their uh, components and uh, now private parties are also over there but if you ask me there's another very big reason that isro does not really invest a lot in research they do not create something completely new sometimes they do but you can see uh, the engines that they have created the vikas engine came from viking engine uh, which was french they took help of russians to get the cryogenic engine ready and the technology transfer was taking place in the 90s until america interfered god damn it americans and then india had to complete it on their own the c25 stage is a completely indigenous cryogenic stage and now they are working on semi cryo engine as well but most of the things that they do they do it what has already been done like even cryogenic engine was already made right they do not do it for the first time and they might be doing a lot of missions but they do not do it for the first time there are few missions that india is planning on doing first in the world like aditya mission aditya l1 to be specific where they are going to go close to sun and do some research over there going to venus is also an idea that other country has not thought of it yet but so far we have only seen things that have already been done by other countries like doing for the second time or third time or fourth time in this world but first we have not seen yet maybe in the future but research also in causes a lot of investment right and there also you are saving a little bit of money so isro is in a huge manner towards production mode so they are producing rocket very fast launches very fast but um, that is definitely cutting down the cost so those are the various ways but ultimately uh, what spacex is doing and you can compare it but spacex is doing reusable launches so that is going to cut down cost to a huge extent in future so if you have to compete you will ultimately have to invest in research right and uh, reusable launch vehicles of isro is not going to be ready i don't know within a decade i don't think so right but these are the various reasons i think and this is the actual reality so are the isro employees unhappy because of the income no they are not they are unhappy because of the posting you can make them happy by paying them a little bit more everyone loves a little bit more money and the inferiority complex that a lot of them are having because i'm having the equal capability but i'm posted over here and i'm living this kind of life that can be nullified if you pay them more and if you want to want them to work a little bit more then you should pay them that is pretty much obvious okay you want more work they want more income and ultimately i want to remove this myth that isro scientists are like working because of their passion that is yes obviously anyone who is working for their passion is very very fortunate but nobody is going to work for their passion if they are not living a good life that is the top priority at least after 10 years 20 years down the line that is going to be the top priority i would say it is just after one year it is going to be your top priority but obviously there are a lot of ex- exceptions and i'm not uh, calling them out and uh, huge thousands of employees working i'm not speaking for everyone but i think a lot of isro employees would be agreeing with me if you are an isro employee comment it down in the comment section and if you are not if you are having any more question you can put that in the comment section as well Hello.